Shalom, my brethren. I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. This is a time where God is going to speak to you directly through the Hour of Value program. Thank you again for being a, um, a, a member, a follower of this program uh, starting in January this year. Now as we are ending this month, I pray that God may support you, may bless you, may be with you, and, ma and God may exhort you in everything you do. Let us pray before we start uh, our word of God of the week. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you for this wonderful moment, wonderful time. Thank you for my brother, my sister. Lord, who is following faithfully this program. I pray that you may bless him, you may bless her. Increase his, her blessing in the name of Jesus. Anoint me, Lord, to speak your mysteries, to unlock your blessing upon your people. Lord, open their ears so they may understand what you have to give them. Anoint me, Lord, to speak faithfully your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is another day uh, with the program Hour of Value. I do believe that uh, this month you have been blessed with this show. Without a shadow of doubt, I know that really you have been blessed. So continue to pray for us. Continue to remember us, even to mention our name in your prayer. We really need your prayer. We really need your support, spiritual support, financial support, even uh, emotional support. So when we, we see people all around praying for us, thinking about us, it really means a lot. And uh, it's an encouragement to our lives. I want to talk with you about the witnesses altar. This is a week where we are speaking about relationship, fellowship with you and God. So the topic is witness altar. This witness altar is an external sign that shows people that you are in constant fellowship with God. Before I continue my sermon, let us read just this one verse in Joshua 22:34. Joshua 22:34. The children of Reuben and the children of God called the altar witness. In Hebrew word is ed, ed, ed witness for it is a witness between us that the Lord is a God the children of Reuben and the children of God called the altar witness it is a witness between them that the Lord is God I think you have uh, some glimpse about this word, the Lord is God, during the time of the prophet Elijah. When he prayed, 
and the fire came from heaven, people shouted, Yahweh is God. Yahweh is God. The coming of fire from heaven to the mountain of Carmel showed that the God really was their God. So they said, Jehovah is God. The Lord is God. So this similar word in Joshua 22 this word is coming from the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of God, even the half tribe of Manasseh. Remember in the wilderness when the sons of Israel crossed the Jordan River, they possessed the land, Canaan. But remember, in Canaan there were seven great nations mightier than them. By the grace of God, they possessed the land, they took possession of the land, those who took possession of Canaan, the other side of Jordan, were just ten, nine, no, sorry, nine tribes and a half of Manasseh. So, which means that before crossing over the Jordan River, they found that the land was very, very fertile. The pasture for their cattle, for their sheep, was very, very important. So, two tribes and half of them, they came to Moses. They said, Moses, allow us to remain here. We don't want to go to cross over. We will remain here with our heads, our cattle, our families. That was the family, the clan of Reuben and the clan of God. Actually, that part was called the Gilead, the east of Jordan, the other side of Jordan. Before crossing to Canaan, they remained on the other side of Jordan. So even the tribe of Manasseh, the half tribe of Manasseh, came to join Reuben and the God, they dwelt there. But Moses told them this, he said, no, we are going to possess the land. How can you stay here while we have to fight and to possess the land? So they made a covenant with him and they say, yes, we will dwell here with our cattle, with our herds, then we will cross over with our brothers, we will fight with them, we will go with them, we will help them until they subdue, until they, they, they will take position, possession of the land. Uh, you see, it, uh, they fulfilled that they fulfilled their vows. They went with Israel, they took possession, they subdued the land, they took dominion, then ten tribes, which means the nine and a half of Manasseh, they were on the other side, the western side of Jordan, which they called a Canaan. So they, remain, they re remained there. Then the sons of Reuben and the God and the, the half tribe of Manasseh, they turned back to their land in Gilead. They crossed over Jordan, then they went there. Today is in Jordan, Jordan country. So they remained there, they remained there, they remained there. It looks that they were disconnected with their brothers. 
Because these other brothers, they have their sanctuary where they went to pray every day, every year, every month in Shiloh. Shiloh, you remember well where are the priest, the priest Eli uh, dwelt. Even the young Samuel was raised there in Shiloh. So all Israelites, they went to Shiloh to worship, to thank God for his protection, his uh, providence, his mercy, his grace, his abundance, his blessing. Each year, Israel went to Shiloh to praise God. However, Reuben, Dan, God, and uh, and uh, and uh, the, the, the half of Manasseh, they couldn't go there. They said among themselves, they say, what can we do so we can stay connected with our God? In the years to come, our children, we know really that God has been gracious, has been with us, help us to come to this land and we will be connected with our brethren on the other side of Jordan. Spiritually, we will be connected. What kind of, of deed or sign we can do to, to, to show that, uh, that, that union, that communion, that fellowship with God and uh, with our brethren. So they got idea. Their idea was to, to build an altar an altar which they called Ed, E T, Ed. The, the, this word Ed means witness. That this altar will not bring sacrifices, we not bring perfumes, we, this we, we, we become just an altar of witness, not an altar of sacrifice, not an altar of offering, but an altar of witness. This altar we become a witness that we still depend on God, we still believe in God, we still trust in God, we still love God, and we, 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 we still have this same very connection with our brothers. So they erected that, uh, uh, that, that altar, that monument. It was huge, it was big. So news went to the other side of Jordan saying that the people of Dan, uh, God and the people of Reuben, they have an idol where they are, they are praying um, idol. They no longer uh, connected with us. So when the news, the rumor went to the other side, all the sons of Israel, the ten tribes, they gathered together in Shiloh. Then they said, let us go attack and kill Reubenite and the Gadites because they defiled our God. They are now worshipping idols. They are no longer with us. They are no longer connected with us. They forget. They forgot our God who brought us from Egypt to the Red Sea, to the wilderness, to this country. They turned against our God. Let us go to war with them, even to kill them. And this will help us to wipe out every, every bad things that can, um, can tarnish, can tarnish our relationship with God. So when they were deciding to go to attack them, 
some wise man they said, no, let, let us go. Let us make inspect, inspection. Let, 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 let us go to, to investigate, to see really if these people are praying other gods than uh, our God, than our Jehovah. So they sent some of, uh, of the priests, they went there to, to, to see the matter if what they are saying is true. Upon their arrival to the Galliard mountain, to the Galliard country, the sons of Reuben and the God, they say, no, this is not an idol. It's just an altar of witness to show that we are with you and we are with God. We did this because of our younger children. When our children will come, they will ask once, one to another, saying, what does it mean, this altar? And people will explain to them that this altar is the witness that God, Lord, is our God. We still connected with our God, we still connected with our brother. Then even the people who are surround us, our neighbors, we ask, what does it mean, this altar? Then we replay to them saying that God has done miracles, has done wonders in our midst. So we put, we, 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 we erect this monument, this altar, just as a witness to show that we have communion between us and a communion with God. Wow. When they heard that, they say, oh, we are very sorry. We had the rumor that you, you turned against our God. So we were preparing to war with you, to come and fight with you. So may the Lord help us. We no longer come to attack you because we understand that this is just a witness, not a just an idol. So these people went back to, the, to, to, to their country. They called Israel and they say. No war, no battle, because the monument, the altar, well, it's just a witness to show people that they are still leaning to God. They are still loving God. And they remember what God has done for them. That's how the, the, the war between 10 tri the tribes and the two tribes stopped. But the idea from the children of Reuben, the children of God, was a good idea. It was just a witness to show people that they still depend on God. They were depend on God. They were depending on God in everything they do, in their decision, their project, their ideas. So those kind of uh, witnesses, those kind of uh, uh, Commitment, that kind of commitment shows really that they were leaning to God. By putting that altar, they made a public confession that the Lord is their God. So your fellowship or my fellowship with God, remember that it's just an internal relationship. When I'm in fellowship with God. I'm in communion with God. It's me and God. It's between me and God only. Sometimes it's not public. It's private. It's private. But sometimes it's very important to show other people that really we have fellowship with God. You see, our way of doing things, of praying, our zeal, our obedience, our devotion, our uh, sacrifice, our prayer, our reading, our everything, actually help us to grow in fellowship with God. Our time before God, our time meditating the Word of God, praying, singing, all those activities, the spiritual activities, help us to grow in our fellowship. So, people may know or 
or may not know if we are in fellowship with God. That depends to us. We can hide it or we can make it public. However, you see, people want to judge everything. They want to know the truth about our communion, our fellowship with God. They want to know really if we have this fellowship with God. But you and me, we know really if we are in communion with God. Our way of devotion, our way of worship, our way of meditating the word of God, we know, we know our weakness or we know our strength in relationship with God. However, for other people to know that really if you are in fellowship with God, something tangible must be done. It's not only enough to be in relationship with God by hiding yourself or in a private way. It, it's better also to show people, to let people know who you are, who really you are. It's good that people to understand that you are really in fellowship with God. Just as you are in a private life with God. Show them publicly that you confess really God. That's how we become a witness. We witness by our life, by our deeds, by our uh, behavior. Don't let your testimony become only private. Just allow other people to see it so they may follow your God. Great people in the Bible have developed a lifestyle of communion with God. You know people who, who had this communion with God. We have many Abraham, we have Noah, we have Enoch. All those people in the Bible they developed their relationship with God. Though they were busy, though they had a family, though they have other things to do. So, are we just a talk of two people, status men, they were in a government, they were in a public life, but these people, they maintain their relationship, their fellowship, their communion with God. Are you ready also to do so? So David and Daniel, allow me to talk about two these status men. King David. King David prayed three times a day so he should maintain his fellowship with God and to seek his help. Imagine he was a king, but he prayed three times a day. You know a king had many issues, many problems to resolve, many questions to answer. How busy are you? David, I think he was probably the most busiest man, but he spared in his time three, three times a day to be with God. His people knew that David was in fellowship with God. It was not a, a secret. His people knew that. They knew that David was with God. His staff knew that uh, in the morning time there is no breakfast with David. He's in prayer. They know that the, the, there was not a lunch with David at noon. He was with God. They know that there was no feast and the dinner at night because David was praying. His people knew that. According to Psalms 55 verse 17, the Bible say, evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in a distress and God hears my voice. Evening, morning, and noon, three times a day. Tell me, how do you work with your time? Tell me your agenda. Tell me your calendar. 
David three times a day. The second one is Daniel. Daniel was in, let me say, Daniel was um, the most, the most busiest man. He was overseeing 120 nations. He was today what we call a prime minister. He was the executive of the 120 nations. But he had the time to pray. Despite the plot and the treason, the envious people, fabricated against Daniel to undermine his relationship with his king boss. Daniel never ceased to maintain his communion with God. Rather, he prayed three times a day. You see, then those people went to the king. They say, King, we want to worship you 30 days. Any person who we worship any other things than you, let that person be put into the mouth, into the den of a lion. The king didn't know that that was a trap for Daniel. So he signed according to the Medes and the Persian law. Because these people knew that Daniel prayed three times a day. So they come to to, to to find that Daniel was praying. He was not praying the, the king, but the God. So they took Daniel, they put him in the dance of the lion. Miraculously, God helped Daniel to come out. The Bible said that when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, Daniel 6.10, he went home and in his upper room, with his window open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed, gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. This was his custom to pray three times a day. He was the busiest man, but his relationship, a communion, fellowship with God was there. Brother and sister, our fellowship with God should not stay only in a private environment, but in a public realm. Our public image should reflect our private life, or our private life should also reflect our public image. You see, like an iceberg in the ocean that shows its peak, but hides its base in the water, in the same way we as a Christian, people see outside like the peak of the iceberg, but we are rooted in the ocean of love of God. We are there, we know God, and we know that God is with us. So as the children of Reuben and God, this is a time to build our altar of witness. This altar was an external external sign to show in the future that God was with them, is with them, will be with them. So in this time of confusion, in this time of uh, apostasy, my brother, my sister, you need to show clearly, to testify about God. How can you can do that? How can you build your altar of witness? For example, to go to church every Sunday and weekdays to fast and pray. People will know that, that you are praying and you are fasting. To do what you want, that people may see God. I want you that from today, you must testify that God is your God. You must show, you must confess that God is God. Remember, Peter said that you are the crusted son of living God. He confessed that. Matthew 16, 16. Are you ready to confess? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord touch you. Today, start to build your altar of witness. Dear Lord, thank you for my brother. Thank you for my sister, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to help him, to help her, to build the altar of witness. In the name of Jesus, amen.